The Philadelphia 76ers had one of the most impressive draft nights in the NBA. The 76ers faced a daunting task of changing their roster around to be able to put their two franchise players in a better position to lead the team. Al Horford was a bad fit for the 76ers, no doubt about it. But not only was he a bad fit, he's under contract for three more years making around $27 million per. It seemed impossible for the franchise to be able to get rid of him in his contract without giving up one of their franchise cornerstones. Daryl Morey showed why he's one hell of a team president. He was able to offload the contracts of Al Horford and Josh Richardson and still be able to keep their 21st pick this year. Danny Green was the player that was taken back, but I believe he can be a nice addition to the 76ers. He had way more impact than Horford gave him last year at a cheaper price, and Green is only on the contract for one more year. And from the Josh Richardson trade, the 76ers traded one of their second round picks and got back combo guard Seth Curry. Curry is a legit shooter and scorer in this league. He can get it off the catch and he can get it off the bounce. You do lose some defense on the perimeter with Josh Richardson gone, but you gain an excellent floor spacer. Getting more shooting is more important for this team. And the Sixers still have good defenders on the team and they can make up for the loss of Richardson. And with their 21st pick, the 76ers drafted the Kentucky product Tyrese Maxey. Maxey fell to them, a player that should have been drafted in the lottery because of his ability to score the rock. He never shied away from big moments and welcomed the challenge to take the big shot. He's a good on-ball defender with good instincts and has active hands. He has point guard size and is not really a facilitator. He'll be a perfect match next to a 16 point guard like Ben Simmons. Maxi's size won't be that much of a problem. He'll check the point guards on the other team while Ben Simmons will defend the bigger players. And with the 58th pick, the 76ers drafted the big man from DePaul University, Paul Reed. You usually don't get a player this talented available this late in the draft. Reed is known for his elite athleticism and elite defense. He plays with a lot of passion and energy and has the wingspan that will allow him to play the center position. Improving his jump shot could give him the opportunity to play alongside Embiid. And also the 76ers could play a more up-tempo style with Reed playing center when Embiid is on the bench. It'll make the team more dynamic on offense. I give the 76ers an A+. Instead of using their 19th pick, the Brooklyn Nets decided to trade it for a proven commodity. A proven commodity that can contribute right away for a Brooklyn Nets team that is ready right now to compete for a championship. Landry Shaman is now a Brooklyn Net. It's important for the Nets to surround as much shooting as they can around their two best players in Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. After re-signing Joe Harris and adding Landry Shaman, it'll make life easier for the star players with a lot of space to work with. The only pick that the Nets used was the 55th pick, and they chose Mississippi State big man Reggie Perry. The co-SEC player of the year has a lot of skill around the basket and was a dominant rebounder as he averaged a double-double in his sophomore year. Perry has great hands, great feet, and has a high basketball IQ. He will have to work on being a better defensive player to get legit minutes in the NBA. But he has good length and athleticism to at least be an average defender. I give the Brooklyn Nets a B-. The New York Knicks had the 8th pick in the draft and they selected the National Player of the Year in college basketball last year, Obi Toppin, one of the most electric and explosive prospects in the draft. He will become an instant fan favorite and provide some box office appeal that can help the Knicks become a fun team to watch again, but more importantly, he can help the Knicks win some games. Toppin was one of the most efficient offensive players in the country last year. His elite athleticism for his size will lead to a lot of easy buckets in transition and off the pick and roll. And if he's able to prove that his 40% shooting from three last year wasn't a fluke, then this outside shooting will be a welcome addition to the Knicks offense. Spacing was a huge problem for the Knicks last year. Adding more shooters will help their offense tremendously. The Knicks had a lot of good options at this pick, and they selected a player who was projected to have one of the highest floors in the draft. But defense may be a problem for him on the next level. The lack of lateral quickness and strength could make it real hard for him to stay on the court early in his career. With the 25th pick, the Knicks selected the SEC Player of the Year, Emmanuel Quickly. Now I was a little surprised he was drafted in the first round, but I can't understand the appeal with his game. Nick Richards wasn't the only player on Kentucky that made big improvements to his game this year. Like I said earlier, 
The Knicks had spacing issues last year. Quickly shot 43% from the three-point line and also shot 92% from the free throw line, which gives the Knicks confidence that his shot is legit. Now, I don't expect him to be a versatile scorer in this league, but he doesn't have to be. Being able to stretch the defense out will have a huge impact and quickly showed a lot of promise defensively at Kentucky, averaging one steal per game. This was a solid pickup for the Knicks. I give them a B plus. The Toronto Raptors pick at 29 was a perfect selection for the franchise. Just like with their other guards on the team, Malachi Flynn fits right in with his style of play. He's a tough competitor and he's consistent. There really aren't any major weaknesses in this game. He can score the rock in many ways. He has deep range on his jump shot. His feel and playmaking ability is above average and he can play defense. Those are some of the things you can also say about Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet. Flynn is undersized also, but he has the grit, the fire, and the skill to make up for that. His polished game should allow him to compete for immediate playing time for the Raptors. Van Vliet resigned with the Raptors and will continue to start alongside Lowry. So they needed more depth at the point guard position. That's why this was an excellent pick. With the second to last pick in the draft, the Raptors went with a bona fide score, Jalen Harris out of Nevada. He was one of the most productive scorers in college basketball, averaging around 22 points per game. He stands at 6'5 and has the ability to score on all three levels. Harris took and made a lot of tough shots in college. More than likely, he won't be given the same opportunities and he will have to pick his spots better to succeed in the NBA. I give the Toronto Raptors a B. The Boston Celtics probably got one of the best shooters in the draft. They used their 14th pick on Vanderbilt sharpshooter Aaron Neesmith, a player who shot 52% from three in 14 games in his sophomore year, and he shot just over nine threes per game, which makes it even more impressive. He has a long wingspan at 6'10", which helps him defend well and also plays with a lot of intensity on that end. He's not a versatile scorer, at least not at this point. Neesmith for the most part takes advantage of aggressive closeouts and is a straight line driver. With their second first round pick, they also drafted a player who plays with high intensity and wears his emotions on his sleeve. Oregon point guard Peyton Pritchard, a player who averaged around 20 points, five assists and four rebounds and shot over 40% from three and he's no slouch on defense either. He played four years in college and is ready to step in immediately and contribute. I probably would have selected Terrell Terry or Malachi Flynn over him, but this is not a bad pick. With the 47th pick, the Celtics took a chance on Israeli guard Jan Madar, a definite drafting stash prospect. This 6'3 talent is an electrifying guard who has been turning a lot of heads in the last couple of years in the Israeli Premier League. He has elite speed and quickness to go along with his good court vision and tight ball handling. He has also played well on the defensive side. There's a lot of promise in this 19 year old from Israel and in two or three years, we could be seeing another Tony Parker in the league in Yarmadar. I give the Celtics a B plus.